and a department circular in that in that respect. That is important because um, you know if, if there is high conviction rate and then there is certainty of punishment and that is a major deterrent, a big deterrent to crimes, the commission of offenses. Right. And then the delays is a perennial problem. Now, there are, of course, Supreme Court circulars mandating um, mandatory, mandating continuous trials, but this is not being complied with or observed strictly. Right. So and it's a matter also of appointing good people in the judiciary. Right. Um, efficient and upright right. members. Meritocracy. Of the judiciary. Yeah. Crucial. Yeah. Yes, merit should all should always be based on meritocracy. We we I've always been advocating for that. Um and, and, and when it comes to our uh, judiciary in terms of, you know, like your backlog of cases, I mean, I think the Philippines has one of the worst cases in terms of, you know, congestion of the penitentiary system, in terms of pretrial detainees, including yourself, right? I mean, more than 50% based on the numbers I saw in 2019. I mean, this is like Central America level. I mean, it's one of the worst on earth. And, and, and also in terms of, you know, like a single judge has to deal with more than 700 cases per year. I mean, these numbers were so bad that I memorized it. Like, I mean, um, so... I mean, how can you have a functioning democracy if the judicial institutions are so overwhelmed uh, with responsibilities and, and, and perhaps there's so much capacity gap? I, I, you know, I had conversations with former uh, Supreme Court uh, Chief Justice Sereno on this, but I want to take on your point who was in terms of the former um, you know, uh, Justice Secretary. What is your take on that in terms of strengthening the, the judiciary overall in terms of you know, manpower in terms of uh, institutional power. I'm sorry, Senator Dilema, I'm, I'm abusing you on this case, but it's just you're such such an experienced person, unfortunately, on both sides of this case that I couldn't but resist I the back, temptation. Yeah. I go back really to appointing the right people. Yeah. If yeah. you have the right people insulated from politics, right. insulated from any other considerations other than their credentials, their qualifications as members of the bar, as members of the bench, then we can expect an efficient, a truly functioning, effective judiciary right. and a justice system that truly works. I always go back to that because we have all the kinds of rules and regulations. We have the laws, we have the rules of procedure. All we all we need are people right. with the right uh, intellect and the right motivation to fulfill their job properly and with excellence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and uh, this is it's it's a basic thing for me. So it's just back to the basics. That's that's your position, uh, Senator Dalima. That if we we just do the basic diligence, the meritocracy, and all, this should yes. carry us through the day, you know. Uh, and unfortunately, perhaps those basics were not done, and there was an adulteration and bastardization of of the system. Now, just just in this case, Senator Dalima, I mean. A uh, former spokesman and some would say former human rights lawyer Harry Roque has implied that your uh, you know your your current situation the improvement in your case had to do something with you know a favorite student of yours now overseeing your case. I mean, what do you have to say about those kinds of accusations? Yeah. In the first place, I don't ever remember that this judge has been my student. Yes, I, I was a professor of law and I've taught many students, hundreds of them. Yes, I would remember some of them, but not all. Honestly, I don't remember this judge as a student. Right. But if he was a student, how could Harry Rockham stop peddling lies? Right. He must stop. <laughs> it's like, it, it, like someone said they're not surprised by this and certainly what do you have to say in terms of repairing the institutions in terms of that um, now you have President uh, Marcus Jr. also saying that perhaps the Philippines will be open to uh, ICC investigations in the Philippines how important do you think that is uh, in terms of you know making sure that human rights and democracy is upheld in the Philippines or are you encouraged by some indications that there's more push for proper look into asked atrocities in the previous administration. I see this as a very positive development, a very positive step. I've been pushing for that, that they allow the ICC 
investigation, notwithstanding our withdrawal from the um, Rome Statute or ICC. In fact, I've been pushing for the restoration of our ICC membership, which was unilaterally withdrawn by right. the former president because of self-interest in order to uh, insulate himself or to evade accountability. Now, this is a very good development. Now, this is not necessarily an indictment of the justice system. Right. If we do that, it's just that since it's being perceived or since the ICC have seen no local domestic or no local jurisdiction, no local authority investigating those with highest responsibility for this drug war killings, then it decided to intervene because that is that that is its mandate. So there is no violation at all of the principle of complementarity mm -hmm. because the principle of complementarity says that if the the um, domestic authority is able to do its own investigation of the crime of a crime cognizable by the Rome statute then the ICC need not intervene now they're they're not seeing that mm -hmm. so what's wrong with the ICC continuing with its probe so it's a very laudable initiative mm -hmm. on the part of the congressmen the members of the house who filed the resolution of course it's just really because it's the decision Ultimately, it's the decision of the executive, but it's the, an expression of the sins of Congress if it's a legislative mill. No, and I, I know it would, but it would be ultimately formally adopted by the House and also by the Senate because it would have such a persuasive uh, effect on the executive. It's a high time for them to rethink and reconsider their initial position of no intervention from the ICC. Oh, uh, and last point, Senator. Thank you so much, Senator. I, 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 I'm sorry. I know you're so exhausted. I don't want to overwhelm you with so many questions. Um, Senator DeLima, um, the thing is, of course, one of the other legacies of the Duterte era is the weaponization of, of uh, you know, any kind of supposedly legitimate restrictions on, you know, absolute expression, uh, freedom of expression. I mean, you had, you know, cyber law and, and, and cyber libel law, among others. And there was a lot of fear that this was weaponized under the previous administration. And, and you know, one of the victims, right, this is the position of them, is uh, people like Congressman Walden Bellio. I mean, what do you have to say about those other cases? Yeah. Um, this this alleged weaponization and some people are saying perhaps this has to be taken to the supreme court and and perhaps push for decriminalization of cyber of cyber libel among others uh in order to make sure that this kind of abuses do not happen what is your take as a as a, as a, as, a, as a legal mind and also someone was a former justice secretary on this and, and someone was also a victim of the weaponization of uh, uh legal institutions and, and laws i am all for the decriminalization of cyber law, of, of cyber libel, and uh, libel, libel, whether it's cyber, yeah. cyber libel, or the, 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 under the revised position, but not criminalization, but uh, you know, the uh, punitive uh, aspect of it, because <laughs> right to free expression when I was there but uh, it, it was never taken up but I think um, some senators had already filed a similar a similar measure and even in the house I hope they would seriously consider that and would pass that and it's it's um, it, it, it's 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 um, not at all uh conducive to the environment of free expression if uh, these kinds of laws persist, criminalization or criminalized cy uh, cyber um, libel and uh, libel under the revised penal code. And, and uh, Attorney, are you uh, 
optimistic that perhaps we'll move on the right direction in terms of making sure that there's a correction or a Amend, uh, amendments necessary or making sure that people who were somehow victims of this in the past administration will also have uh, their moment of justice in the coming months or year. I mean, in short, I'm asking whether uh, you um, getting closer to getting the justice you deserve um, is, is perhaps part of a bigger wave of correction of the abuses that happened in the past. Or perhaps are you cautiously optimistic that yes, overall... Yes, the environment yeah, seems to be conducive. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I'm, 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 I, I can see that we have now an environment to uh, reassess all those draconian measures yeah. that should never be considered again uh, in the stream of consciousness under Philippine politics. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm confident. And I'm optimistic that we have the right environment now to rectify all those. And, and lastly, I forgot actually to ask this. Senator Delima, you had this very close call situation uh, during the pandemic, right? That you were held, held hostage by one of the detainees inside. Uh, yes. The, my goodness, I'm sorry, I don't want to you know, bring back the trauma, but... We were really worried about what was going on there. I mean, to what degree can you share about that without... I'm sorry, I don't want to bring back your trauma, but it just tells the, the, the depth of your 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 trial uh, over the past few years. It's not just being behind bars, but you were almost, you know, you were, you were almost victimized directly. I really thought... Yeah. I really thought it was my end. Really. Yeah, sure. It was a serious incident. Really. Um, oh... It was a Sunday, early morning. I was praying the rosary at about 6.30. I had opened already my quarters, my, my cell, because the, the sun is up. I, I opened my, I opened my, there's light already outside. Now, those Abu Sayyaf detainees are supposed to be in a separate, they were in a separate compound, also locked, padlocked, and all. But, tinay mga nila yung guard na naghatid ng breakfast. And isa lang kasi yung naghatid ng breakfast, so it was a security lapse. Yeah. So, this guy, this guard almost died. He was stabbed by this uh, detainees. And, well, fortunately, the one assigned of the uh, tower was vigilant enough, was alert enough that he saw what was happening. So he shot them, the two of them, only two out of the three. But the third one managed to to uh, survive the the the, uh, the shooting from the guy in the uh, tower, and he was able to climb because that was, as, as I said, it was a locked compound. There was a barbed barbed wire. Right. But this guy climbed over that fence, ran towards my own compound. And since he saw that my quarters was already open, he entered. And then he, with a uh, with a uh, improvised knife, he grabbed me. He uh, put his the knife here in my chest cons consistently all the time. Yeah. The knife was here, and he was saying, "Pinatay na ho yung dalawa kong kasama. Kailan sa mama kaya sa akin ikaw lang ang paraan para makalabas ako ng buhay dito." Yeah. And but he was manhandling me also. He was pushing me. I would drip, and I, and, and I I had some hematoma here, and he was demanding for certain things. He was demanding for for media. He was demanding for um, a a uh, a plane, C one thirty, to go to Sambong to to Sulu. He was demanding for a getaway vehicle, hammer vehicle. I said I could not. I sabi niya, hindi mo yan. Kung sabi mo sa kanila dalim dito, kung tako ng Sulu, and all sa sama kita. Sabi ko, hindi ko yan maku... Hindi ko yan... Hindi ko yan ma... Mahihingi sa kanila. I'm not in a position to... 
demand for that. Yeah. And then he was asking for my cell phone because he said it's going to call for, it's going to call someone. Yeah. I said, I don't have cell phone. He said, no, uh, impossible. No, I have cell phone. No, I really don't have cell phone. Even if you kill me, uh, you won't see any cell phone here. Um, papatayin kita kung hindi mo ilalabas ang cell phone. There were several, several times they would say that papatayin kita, papatayin kita, and all. And then I was, I really got scared. Yeah. When he said, when he started praying, because he said, "Mom, it's already, it's almost seven ten. If it's already, if it's seven thirty, na hindi pa." nila binibigay yung mga hinihingi ko, papatayin kita. Isasama na kita. And then, around 7.15, that's when he started praying in Islam. Yeah. And he said, Ma'am, mukhang wala mang nangyayari dun sa mga request ko. So, eto na. Eto na. Pasensya na. Mamamatay na tayo. It's a sama kita, so we prayed. So I knew it. So that's it. That's the time. So I started praying. Bahala na kayo, Lord. Bahala na kayo sa pamilya ko. And my additional request was, please, Lord, make it quick. I do not want to suffer. No, no, a uh, quick, no, 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 you know, uh, uh, bleed to, bleeding to death. So make it quick, just one, and that's it. That just once, and then that's it. But then he made a mistake of asking for water, and it so happened the director was there. He was the one, he was the one negotiating with him, and the director was saying, "Ito ka sa so we can talk." But he said, "No, alam ko pa ako because he doesn't want to." He didn't want to leave me because I was yeah. I was just on a I was sitting down with my hand tied, blindfolded, with my feet tied, and with his with a knife here, consistently here, always, you know, sometimes it's it's he would push it hard and I would shout, I would scream. <laughs> and so um uh, when he asked for that water, that's when I said as I said he made a he made a mistake because you know in the Sakanya, the director Pes Pes had the chance of shooting him. Yeah. He had the director Pes Pes. He had with yeah. him a hidden, a short, small firearm. So when he was, he was handing over the glass of water. Man, John, you know, my young knife, he just a chest. Yeah. So yeah. I almost died. I re- I thought it was my end. It's just it, terrible. I, I didn't see when hmm. I, I since I was blindfolded. Oh, you I, were blindfolded. I, I not, oh, I didn't know. That. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, I was blindfolded. My hands were tied. My feet were tied, and I was sitting. So um, I I did I didn't even know that when he was being handed that water that the officer was ready to shut him down. Yeah. I just heard the next thing I knew, the next thing that happened was four consecutive shots, close range. I did not see the guy fall when he was shot. So it was an instant death for the guy. And I was taken out. I never saw him because my blind uh, pole was, uh, was taken out when I was out already of my quarters. So it was a harrowing yeah, experience. Yeah, so they had to bring me to the hospital for several days for examination. <coughs> I had um, yeah. trauma here, chest trauma. I, I'm sorry, yeah. uh, Senator, for asking that because that was one of the the moments like lahat kami, we were extremely worried about you and we were also extremely about thinking about i mean what are the broader implications here if god forbid no um, sir delima do you think that was a lapse talaga was it like a complete accident or you're wondering maybe there was a foul play or some some wishy-washy things happening i mean have you reflected on that aspect 
Um, because some were wondering if you were properly taken I've been care thinking of. About it. I've been thinking about it. There is a theory about it. It, it may not, you know, it's first, was I, did they really intend to make me an hostage? You a hostage. You and I think, yes, because how could they, Yeah. how could they have <clears throat> gone out or how could they ever think of coming out of the custodial center? without a human shield yeah exactly and who would be the best choice for a hostage and i'm the high, most high profile detainee there right but as to whether it's something else there's something else or someone else behind it it remains to be a speculation you know. it's hard to do but uh, it's a possibility it's only a speculation at this point. Um, and, and Senator Dilema, do you think after, I mean, after surviving yet another ordeal like that, you think God was telling you that you have a mission, that there's this another chapter in your life? I mean, usually when you survive something as close as that, you come, I mean, you were already going through a lot of spiritual awakening and transformation, but I mean, this is next level, right? I mean, did you feel now? Maybe God really has a mission for me that I have to really fight I, for something and be someone after this. Very close. I always, I always believe that if it's your time, if it, it's your time. Mm. And since I survived it, so I do think that siguro nga, siguro nga, meron pang dapat akong gawin, meron right. pang kailangan gawin. I, I do believe that. I survived it. So that means it's not yet my time and probably... I still have submission in life. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Delima. I mean, I wanted to ask you more about what's the next and all of that, but I know you want to rest. Uh, there's the dust has not completely settled yet, so I'm sorry. I don't want to come off as parang you know, so yung yung openness mo and your kindness and generosity for sharing your time with me. I'm so sorry if I brought back some of this trauma, but let me tell you, Senator Delima, lahat kami nagmamal sa yo. We have been praying for you. You don't know how, how happy we are. I mean, it, just the word joy doesn't even capture having this opportunity, having this conversation with me and God willing and inshallah, you know, in the near future, we can have a chance to catch up together in person. And, and you know, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're just... Yes, I would love that. I would love that. And yes. you're such an inspiration, Senator Delima. I, I really mean it. I really, really mean it, Senator Delima. You're, you're such an inspiration. I mean, I was not born until after ETSA, so I didn't have a chance to, you know... Um, see the Ninoy Aquino moment and all of that. Um, and of course, 